My name is Rob Suik, and I work at the Center of Human Drug Research in Leiden, the Netherlands, as a clinical pharmacologist. In my work, I frequently conduct studies in which new compounds are administered in humans for the very first time. To determine a safe starting dose, the major source of information is the investigator's brochure. However, such a document is more often than not very huge, as it contains several hundred pages. And this, together with its complexity, makes it difficult to read. This online tool called IBDRISC offers the possibility to gain an overview of the information that is presented in the IB. And with this tutorial, I will show you the main characteristics of our tool. Once you have opened the web page and have registered, you will be able to log in. After you are logged in, you will get to the overview page that shows investigator brochures that have already been added to the tool. To add a new IB, press this button. This form provides you the option to fill in the general information of your IB. So you fill in the title, the protein binding and percentage, the molecular weight and the measuring unit where you can choose from a drop-down menu and choose the appropriate unit. Finally, there's the option to add a PDF of the IB, making it easier to refer to the related IB. Then press Save. The next step is to enter all the individual studies that are mentioned in the investigator brochure. First you press this plus button. And for each study you use the format that is shown on the screen. Once you have entered a single preclinical study from the investigator brochure, it may look like this. An important feature of this tool is the selection of a color code. For each study from the IB needs to be tagged with a color code. For example, if a PK study with rats yields no clinical observations, this needs to be labeled white. If a preclinical study reported safe results with no observed side effects or reports an intended pharmacodynamic result, this needs to be labeled green for safe and desirable effects. On the other hand, if a preclinical study showed severe and harmful side effects, this would be labeled red for serious irreversible toxicity and or death. For the other color codes, the description is easy to understand. After this, you can enter the next study from the IB into this overview. This may seem as a dull and laborious task, but you will be rewarded in the end. Once you have entered all preclinical studies in the online tool, the overview may look like this. The next step is to make graphs and to export the database into Excel. A useful graph is one where the human equivalent dose is depicted against the CMAX for each species. Now let me show you how it works. In this study rats and mini pigs were studied. So I will select these and generate a graph. Such a graph easily shows deviations between species and it also helps you to give a rough estimate of the CMAX in situation where this was not measured or mentioned in the IB. It also provides information on the reliability for the translation of the preclinical data towards predictions into humans. Once you have exported the data into an Excel file and after some modifications, it may look like this. Each row represents and contains information from a single preclinical study. And it is important to realize that all rows are sorted on the CMAX. This is based on the fact that the volume of distribution is one of the more reliable allometric scaling factors available. Now, let me walk you through the arrangement and tell you what it actually says. All white rows represent mainly PK studies performed in animals without any clinical observations. The green lines are those studies that report safe effects or that reported the intended pharmacodynamic effect. And the yellow line represents those studies that described undesirable but accepted effects. 
As you may see, in this example there is one red line, and that represents a study in which female rats died because of unexpected exposure to high study drug concentrations. In all, the pattern of colors provides an impression of the shape of the concentration effect curve of the compound. But what does it tell you about the range of the doses for your clinical study? Well, this can be seen in the brown lines, as these depict the selected doses for our first in human single ascending dose study. The very first row is the selected starting dose. And you can easily see that this starting dose is below the Mabel and far below the onset of undesirable effects. More can be said about the interpretation of this table, and many can be read in a related article. But this is it for now, and you may contact us in case of any questions.